Hello, this is Daniel. In this short video, I'll share a brief demo, a self-contained demo of the coming release of the clay tool. We're still looking for feedback and in very few weeks, we'll have the official release and then we'll have probably a similar video after a few adaptations. All of this is joint work with uh, our friend Tim, who is very much involved in the current state of clay and uh, also the whole visual tools group. And, and these days, Tim, Kira and I, we, we're working as a team in evolving uh, this part of the ecosystem. I'll share the screen and we'll look into a few things. So you see my screen now and you see the browser and the terminal. And in the terminal, we'll just create a directory with a small closure project. That will be our demo. And in this directory, we will just open Visual Studio Code, which is the editor we'll use uh, in this demo. So now we have VS Code open and we can start creating stuff. And uh, the demo folder is open, so we can create a depths.eden file, right? So let us create that. Here we have our closure dependencies. Uh, one of them will be the clay tool. And, uh, you know, uh, it is still alpha stage, not for long, but at the moment it is. And we can search for it in closures and see the current version. So, yeah. We'll add just another dependency so that our demo wouldn't be too trivial. So I'm adding this working progress, oh, sorry, working progress library called Nodge. You don't have to add that to use Clay, of course, but it will just make the example a bit more interesting. Nodge is collecting a few of the relevant dependencies of the data science stack and adding some functionality on top of them. So here are the current versions of Clay and Nodge, and we can jack into a REPL. Or maybe before that, we can create some tiny closure source file. So let us first create a directory. Let us call it notebooks, which is where we typically put our notebooks. And here we can have our namespace. Let us call it scratch. So here is our namespace. And let us start the REPL. So I call the jack in command of Calva, and I use the depths.eden file to jack in. And we will have a REPL running in a moment. Great. So now let us see that we can use this namespace and evaluate stuff inside. Right. This is just the wonderful Calva we're using. Now, what we may do is send this REPL, sorry, this namespace. We can send this namespace to be visualized as a notebook in the clay tool. To do that, we will use the uh, 
custom REPL commands of Calva. So I have this uh, command in this code called Calva custom REPL commands. And you see, we have this menu of a few available commands. They will be available whenever you have the clay jar in your class bar. Let us pick uh, maybe this one. Make namespace as HTML. What it does is running clay, opening the browser view of clay and rendering the whole namespace as a notebook in the browser. And maybe that's the basic thing we do. We use a namespace as a notebook. That is what clay is about. But we may also visualize just one form, just one closure form we wish to visualize like this one plus two, we may wish to see the result of. So let us do that. So again, we can go to the custom REPL commands and we have another command. We can also do that through a key binding and let us do that. So we see we just have just this value, just this form evaluated and rendered in the browser. And let us add a little bit to our namespace to make it a bit more complete. So um, one thing we may add is this notch library, or at least a few namespaces from there. So we may add the data sets namespace, where we just have a few data sets to play with. And maybe also the Hanami namespace for visualizing data using a, a wrapper of the famous Hanami library for data visualization, which is kind of made to be com compatible with the amazing tablecloth library for working with data sets. So let us play with that. And so we can evaluate yet another thing. Maybe let us add a few, a little bit of uh, comments uh, into our namespace. So uh, maybe we can have this title, uh, intro. This will be the intro section. And in the intro, we have uh, some subsection about uh, arithmetic. And maybe another one about data sets. So we have this kind of notebook with all these things we're creating. And in the data sets, we may look into a data set from the data sets namespace. Oh, sorry, I need to evaluate this top form, the namespace definition so that we have uh, this. Yeah these namespaces available. It takes some time to load because it is loading many dependencies. And maybe again with the Anami alias. So now we have data sets and we may, for example, take the famous Iris data set. And yeah, we can see that in the REPL, right? Printed by the nice printing of the TechML data set uh, library. But also we may send that to the browser to be visualized. So let us do that. So I'm pressing a key binding to do what I did earlier uh, with the custom REPL command. I didn't need to go to into the menu. You know, the custom REPL command has a key binding, so you can use that. And right, you see that rendered as markdown, rendered as markdown, then HTML in the browser. Maybe let us uh, have another thing, which is, uh, uh, tables. So you see, this data set is just printed uh, with some styling around, but you may also wish to have some table UI around it. So for this, we would use kindly. Kindly is a way to request specific kinds of data visualizations. And we'll add that here. So you see, you may, for example, take a value you have like this iris data set 
which is recognized as a certain kind by default, but you may say, no, I wish to make it be of a different kind. So we may say kind table, and that will invoke the table view. So let us see how that looks. So you see now we have this table UI with the famous old JavaScript data tables library. So you can now sort by column and you know sort by different columns and you may search for um, a certain value and so on. So we have this table UI. Just an example of picking a certain kind and using that. Um, so um, yeah, maybe let us do another thing uh, just for fun, let's see something visual. So um, you may use your data set and apply some data visualization function to it. We may take this linear regression plot from Nodge. It is built on top of Hanami, but adds some functionality like, you know, uh, computing the regression line. So to do that, we need to say what, which column is modeled by which other column, kind of the target and the feature, so to speak. So for example, we may model the petal length as the y-axis by the petal width as the x-axis, and we may have an options map with a few more details. Let us send that to be visualized. Oh, sorry. The key binding for custom replica command. Oh, and it is broken. Oh, because I forgot the ivory status, right? Yeah. So now we get the regression plot, and yeah, we can control the um, details. So we may have some options for the line, uh, like make it of a certain color. And here we're using the Hanami convention of specifying the details of a data visualization. And there are already great tutorials for Hanami. You should look up the workshop by Kira McLean explaining Hanami in detail and uh, maybe make it of a certain size, like 10. Let us see how that looks. Yeah, and maybe some opacity. Right. Oh, and maybe also let us make the points uh, bigger, right? Just for fun. So, yeah. We're doing that, that just to... Uh, demonstrate that this kind of experience of interactive exploration by, you know, sending a certain value to be visualized. So let us make the points bigger. And yeah, maybe that's that. Right. So here we have uh, some data visualization made through our browser view in Clay. Another thing we may do is render the whole notebook as we saw earlier. So first we, uh, maybe let us just to recall that, let us go back to the menu of custom wrapper commands. Oh, sorry. Oh, here it is. So, right, we may make the namespace as HTML. So we have everything we've created here, but we may also use another command to make the namespace as Quoto, then HTML. So Quoto is this publishing tool. If you have it installed in your system, then you will have this nicely styled rendering of a namespace as HTML through Quoto. And what Quoto can also do is render a, a Quoto document as a reveal JS slideshow, let us do that. So we go to the custom rep commands. Yeah, everything has a key binding, but let us do it through the menu. So we can ask for reveal JS rendering. So now we have the slideshow, right? Then you may kind of travel between the slides and see these things in the slideshow. 
everything we're creating here is saved as HTML. It is just HTML files. And you can then push them to your GitHub repo and serve them on GitHub pages or whatever. Let us see the file explorer so that you can see we've generated a docs directory with all the necessary details. And for example, we have this scratch.html file, which is your notebook that you can just push alongside the scratch files directory. You can push that to uh, anywhere on the web and serve it as a web page. It is just plain HTML with a little bit of JavaScript added for uh, interactive stuff. That's it, basically. That's uh, an overview of the current experience using Clay from within Visual Studio Code and Calva. And we're looking for your feedback, and then we'll kind of adapt and make it a bit more complete. And I'm stopping showing the screen. And also, uh, you know, we have a similar Emacs setup still, uh, yeah, which is kind of ready, but still need to be kind of wrapped in an Emacs package and also a similar IntelliJ setup. And, and yeah, any feedback will help. And uh, at this time, mostly because we're kind of wishing to make things more stable. And see you soon, I hope. Take care.